Oh, we. I think we have Steve Rhodes calling in. Steve, are you there? I am, but I don't want to interfere with no, your, no, uh, no, no. your presentation listen, at all. Hey, listen, you're an award-winning guy. Not, I've never won the timer of the year, and you won it no. twice. So tell me what you're looking at, my friend. No, no, no. Well, you know, I thought first I, I was listening to the uh, the intro of your of uh, the first segment, and you know, I, I'm in agreement with you that the Fed is raising rates at a time when probably it shouldn't be, you know, because all it's going to do is really make inflation worse. Because we've got supply chain issues. So when we increase cost of business, typically those get passed on to people. That just increases inflation. And you know, Powell's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. If he takes no action, he'll get blamed for causing inflation, even though it's really more of the administration's issues than it is his. Um, and if he doesn't take any, you know, if he, if he, and if he does take action, it's just going to make matters worse. So I think he gets blamed either way. Um, but but I'm in agreement with you is that he's, he's raising rates at a time when he probably shouldn't be raising rates. In fact, I would say he shouldn't be raising rates at this stage out here. Uh, and, and with regard to housing, I think it's really a secular thing. You know, uh, what I've experienced down here over the last couple of years during the COVID is we had a big, huge migration of people from the north into uh, Florida. And, um, and and we had houses that would be on the market for like an hour. And no matter what you put as your asking <laughs> price, people would be outbidding. Now, when, when yeah. he started raising rates here, Larry, that dropped off just a tad. But uh, we put a place on the market in Naples. We sold it within three weeks. We got more than the asking price uh, for it. Um, I know others around here that have put their houses on the markets um, and have still, uh, you know, seen maybe it haven't sold in a day, but it's sold within a couple of weeks. And they're getting their asking or maybe a little bit more. So I think that the real estate piece of it, you know, is a little bit uh, segmented. It may be even different in Tampa than it is I'm down here in the southeast out there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not something that you can that, – that's not, I don't think housing is going to slow down necessarily across the board. At least that's not what I'm seeing in South Florida, whether it's the East Coast or the West Coast, not just yet. You know, I agree with you on the real estate, but I'm probably – without doubt, I am the worst real estate investor in uh, in the world. I mean, I, I you know, I've had a couple – my homes have done well. Yes. But uh, I, the only pieces of property I ever had, I, I, I bought them in the best possible place in Los Angeles, uh, Westlake Village, uh, held them for nine years, made like 10 percent. And had I held them, uh, it would, my hundred thousand dollars. However, however, though, I have to disagree with you. You do still have those shares in the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, I do. Both shares are still <laughs> available if anybody'd like to buy them. But uh, some of that stuff in Westlake Village, uh, my original house that I paid thirty-two grand for, even yeah. before they had water in the lake, uh, is now worth one point six million. I, I saw it on Zillow, and I, I, I just, I was shocked at. Yeah, you know. Well, look, uh, real estate. Anyway. Real estate's one of those areas. You know, one of the three or four places where people can really accumulate wealth. So, uh, yeah. but look, I thought today we'd talk about uh, price and time markets that I'm seeing inside the market. Please do, and, yeah, I'd like and, because you're yeah, you're so let's, you've done a great yeah. job. So please share us with what you're looking at. Okay, so first let's start with last Friday's price action. And what I show in last Friday's price action is that it confirmed a few A to B equals CD down targets. Now, Larry, what I do for the A to B equals CD pattern, which you taught to me, is I look for as prices approaching either the one to one area or one of its extensions, I look for some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that an attempt of a bottom is forming. And inside the S&P and the Dow last week on Friday, they generated uh, bullish hammer candles. The Russell 2000 already had an A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed by a bullish engulfing back in the middle of September out there. And that uh, low was tested and it held on last Friday. The uh, semis formed an, a buy the D point pattern a couple of weeks ago when it formed a bullish hammer candle. Uh, see. Uh, I'm not sure what is. All right. So. Interesting. OK. Uh, all right. Sorry about that, folks. So we need to, we're having a slight I'm having a slight problem here. I think we can fix it. Hopefully it's been fixed. Um, and now we've got the uh, chart. So I'll just start over here on the very left hand side. We've got the uh, Dow chart. You should see it in black. Uh, that was a bullish hammer candle. The key level of support, folks, write this down in your pad of paper is thirty thousand five fifty um, because the price closes below that. Then it will negate the signal. In the case of the S&P 500, it's 38.37. Uh, that is the low of last Friday. So those are two A to B equals CD patterns that I have that formed. The Russell 2000 lower left 
That had completed its pattern. Its key level of support was tested last week and held. The same with the uh, semiconductor index. And if the Dow transports form a bullish engulfing candle, which they had formed as of about half an hour ago, Larry, they should form a 1 to 2.618, A to B equals CD to the downside. The NDX 100 is the only one of the uh, primary cash indices, Larry, that I don't have that has a A to B equals CD confirmed bottom pattern. But if we switch over and take a look at the NQ, and like yourself, I like to really generate all of my signal calls from the equity futures contracts simply because we're pattern recognition experts. And so it's about price discovery. And the more data, it makes it easier for us to be able to identify the patterns out here. So in the case of the NQ, it did form a bullish hammer candle last Friday. So in effect, I've got uh, buy the D point patterns that are out there for most of these markets. Now, that may just simply turn into a, a counter trend move, but we do have the buy the D point patterns. But if we do get a counter trend move inside the NQ, my price target on the way up is something I refer to, Larry, as the oscillator and change line. Now, this line is going to change as price moves up and down, so you have to use this as a guideline. But the guideline would suggest that a counter trend move should take us into the 12,264 level. Price gets up there to that red oscillator and change line and rejects it. Then we head lower and we likely head lower. At least test the hammer candle from Friday. If we take that out, then we're likely headed to the uh, June lows. Um, and uh, if last Friday's bullish hammer candles fail, and here I've got the charts for the NDX 100 or the S&P, the Dow and the NQ, what they will do is then form a larger A to B equals CD to the downside. And I'm sure during your workshop tomorrow, you're going to talk all about the A to B equals CD patterns. As an A to B equals CD pattern, what we're waiting for is we're always waiting for new information. As we get new information, sometimes those patterns change, sometimes we get uh, multiple A to B equals CD patterns with inside a larger pattern. And here what I'm showing is a larger pattern. So if last Friday's lows fail, then I would expect the S&P 500 to get down to 3680, maybe 3561. I'd expect the Dow to get down to 29271 or 28391. I'd expect the NQ to target 11161 or 10664. So last Friday is really a key session as I see it, and it makes it a little bit easier for us to be able to identify where price would head should those lows get taken out. Um, I see we're kind of running out of time here. So um, any questions about what I what I shared with you so far? Well, listen, you're right at spot on, Steve. I don't see anybody can fault it at all. Now, I, tomorrow I'm going to be working on shorter term time frames because, you know, we're trying to make money on these patterns. So we'll move sure. down to 10, 15 minutes and sometimes even five minute charts because you get some big swings. I mean, just since we've been on uh, on the air here, we've rallied 150 to 200 points in the Dow Jones. Hey, thanks yes. for joining us, Steve. I you really bet. appreciate it, buddy. You Steve bet. Hughes, good folks. Hey, good luck tomorrow, Gary. Thanks a lot, Steve. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesadino setting in for Tom O'Brien. 